So do you want a whole actual presentation since it's just the two of you or do you want to talk about it? Yeah. Let's just chat. We'll just put it on. Okay, we'll show you what we made. Time. We spent so much time making this. We will show you exactly. Yeah, I switch because you're going to go through it too. No, I will go through a really good pace. Trust me. All right, so have you ever seen this picture before? You know who Saber is? Yeah. Good. The one on the left is Booper. No. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. They're left. One on the left. One on the left. Yeah. Get closer so you can see why. Yeah, can I come closer? No, I, I can see it. <laughs> come on. Yes, I may be, I may, I may have these eyes, but I'm not that blind. <laughs> okay. Not yet, anyways. So, that, that I, I myself think it's fake. But that's kind of illustrative. Most of the time, if you're looking for a bootleg, it, it's not real, real hard to tell. It's not this obvious. They don't look like, it's not going to be this severe, but pretend you don't see the face. Look at the, the clothes. The clothes, see, it's not just discolored, but the material is different. Mm -hmm. It's like, it looks like candy, like the hard candies. Yeah. And that's really indicative. The real stuff is going to look matte finished. It's gonna look, it's not like skin, but it doesn't have a shine like that. If it's too shiny, it's probably gonna be fake. It's texture. Yeah. Okay, so the pins are the easiest thing because we were, we used to be a humongous pins dealer. So we know pins like crazy. And they're all over the dealer's room because everybody seems to be able to get a hold of pins and they're super easy to identify. So we'll show you some good pictures. Like this. This is the fake crap. The really obvious fake crap. Except for the con, I'll admit, the con looks pretty good. But these were all made back before they really started getting licenses for pins. I mean, you'd have the odd Final Fantasy one for real, or sometimes you'd have a real one for... What do they make real? They do a lot of... Um, Street Fighter. Street Fighter, Ranma. Um, basically, before, before people, I guess the industry, actually started making pins for their anime, Bootleggers jumped on it real quick, and there were some. I hate to say it, there were some really good-looking ones back in the day. I uh, think the two on this page that I like the best are the, are the Final Fantasy Warrior and Khan. They look good. And this is and again, this is before the industry actually saw, hey, we can actually make some money off of yeah. it. Yeah. Still bootleg though. Yeah, still bootleg. We get to consider bootleg. Cipher though, I wouldn't consider good. Cipher looks like crap. And Roy Mustang. And Roy Mustang with that dog. That's what it is. Like this. So if you see these things, these are real obvious fakes. The con, though, this exact con, they make real now. So you got to be, I guess, wary of it because this one is the fake one. The other one, you'll know the differences between the bleach ones because here we'll show you. Well, we'll show you in a second. The backs of the pins are giveaways that they're fake because they don't have any copyright info on them. See, all they're all blank except that one that says Nippon, but that's just saying Japan real big in bold letters. So unless there's a copyright back there, it's fake. And you, uh, if and when you do purchase one that is fake, uh, right away don't blame the dealers. We're we're guilty of it ourselves. Back when we first started being dealers, we bought a bunch of bootleg pins and had no idea until someone actually took us to the side and was like, "Look, this is the difference." And uh, you'll see the difference right now. Yeah, these are our pins. We were selling these pins for a while, and we didn't like selling the side because it looked like crud. And we tell people, "Well, it's a crappy pin. You sure you want it?" But like the the whole Bleach series. That Final Fantasy series with the Warriors and all that, we loved those pins. They were good. And they still haven't made those Final Fantasy Warriors yet, so I, don't, I guess it's the industry falling down and letting them, calling the bootleg and not actually stepping in to fix it for us. Let's see what else we got. These are real. And look at Yodoichi. All of the new Bleach ones look like that. You see the shiny stuff? See the silvery edge? All of the new Bleach have that. It's the exact same models. They took almost exactly what the bootleggers were making. They took the the, the finish and the look, and they just put a silver line around it. Made them a touch thicker when you look at the pin. But otherwise, they just made the same pins with, with a silver lining. So wouldn't that be the bootleg or is the real thing? No, the real thing has the silver lining. The fake one is the one that just looks like it's the edge that they actually cut it out right. Oh. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't so. Uh, the new Dragon Ball ones, the old Dragon Ball ones were actually metal, like like the ones we had shown you before. Most of the old pins had that, that look on the back. The back of the old pins looked pretty much stock. They didn't all say any point on them. They had that little grainy look. They were either dark gray or maybe like gunmetal gray. But the new, all the new Dragon Balls come PVC. If you see a PVC pin, it's probably real. The bootleggers don't bother with the PVCs. It's harder to make. It's harder to texture, color. It's just cheaper to, to bang out the others. Mm. And I guess one of the other giveaways, of course, is yeah. the backings. Uh, all the backings now actually have the copyright symbol and uh, what company made it. And granted, some of them, if you look at this one, you really don't know what 
X slash, or K slash S T T D P means, but do you see the little copyright symbol right on? I can't get the mouse out. Yeah. Well, it's there. You yeah. see the copyright on the bottom of her leg. That one's the back of Yoroichi. And if you look at the back, they're usually more of a, it's not really matted. Yeah. It's more just a, a smooth metal backing now. I mean, a couple of them, like the back of Yoroichi, have it, but they have the copyright. I think the bleach ones, I think they started working with the, the bootleggers which probably the industry should have done because they were making some really good things. And if you have them making it already, just saying, no, you pay me for a license and go sell your stuff. Because, I mean, I would have been happy as a consumer, they made some good stuff. But now the new ones, they're all like this, all this real light metal, real, real light metal. And generally, like on the ODB you see they put it on there. It's real built in, maybe soldered on. The new ones kind of have a hard glue. And if it's hard glued, it looks like it might be late because that seems cheap. But that's what the real ones are doing. Like the real ones make this hard glue on them with a real thin metal. And why? So it can break easy. Yeah. It's, I hate to say it. It sure seems true. like it. They break in our hands because we play with these things. And the older ones, and we had those older ones for a couple of years, they didn't break. Those things, people, you see people walking around with a hat covered in pins that weighs like four, to four or five pounds, covered in old pins. And you, I know you've seen them. They're everywhere. And they're good pins, but they're all their bootleg now. But those things, they still don't break. Those people had them for 20 years and they don't break. Yeah, just check the, the two that I have. They don't, I just, they just See? Those two, the one you have right there, what's her name, the, with the camera from yeah. the, the Sakura? Yeah. She's bootleg. We used to sell them. You might have bought it for us. I think I might have bought it for them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now we know that that's considered bootleg. Mm -hmm. And we can't sell any Sakura stuff. They don't make Sakura stuff. I think they make super boxes. I would super be happy to buy a legit version of this if they made it. See, if they, would, if they would make it. And that's kind of like our cry to the industry, I guess you could say. <laughs> Through the, after the whole lesson of everything we're going to show you, it's kind of us reaching the industry saying, please, the bootleggers are doing it because you have it, at least in form, terms of pins. They've never stepped up with the pins. They're still only kind of pointing the finger going, you're bootleg, you're bootleg, don't make it, but, but we're not gonna make it either. Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna make it either, but, but you can't. Yeah. That sort of thing. Now, we'd love it if they made the good stuff, because yeah. we buy it. We used to be the pin guys. Yeah. Okay? All right, capsules and trading figures. We know that stuff too, because we have bought those and we see the crud, big time crud. These are. These get semi to real obvious when you're looking at them in the dealer's room. It's a little harder because most of the people will have them behind like plexiglass or like away into the big signs, don't touch, please do not touch signs. You see those everywhere. You have to ask real hard questions if you're worried. Because some of those, they might not know it either. Like he said, we were victims too. We bought them and all of a sudden, this is crap. What are we selling this in? And you can tell, uh, I guess, click. You can tell real obvious which one's the bootleg and which one's the real one. When it comes to capsules, uh, Bandai especially uh, really care about what they're selling. Um, they'll, they'll send out the first shipment and the first shipment will be amazing. Second shipment, or second, uh, I guess, print, third print. They're not as detailed, but you'll still see uh, the changing in the color of the eyes. You'll see the detail and the bandage, unlike the bootleg, where you can see all the messed up paint in the hair, He's looking over here and looking straight. It's like the cockeyed. Yeah, I mean, the bandage is more like a little scar on his face. And he has a, and he's a goatee. goatee for some odd yes. reason. I think that was a total accident. Their, their kids don't work as hard. But you can tell with capsules. But you, I, I hate to say it, asking a dealer to see their capsule is kind of hard nowadays. Uh, if they have it behind glass, if they have it behind plexiglass, they do it for a reason, mostly because they don't want people to steal. And we can totally relate to that because, I mean, we we have theft at our, at our booth. But at the same time, we want you to be able to pick it up and look at it. It's, it's really the only positive way you can tell if it's bootleg. This is obvious. That we Again, we were victims of buying bootleg, and we bought this one. And he came with a whole series. He wasn't the only bad one. Everybody was this bad. But we brought him because they, we could put those two face by face, and they're really illustrative. And like the, on the bootlegs, skin color is a real, real big giveaway. If they're pink, like that one on the right, it, they're bootleg. They're usually, I mean, you've seen anime, they make them white. They love, they love the pale. So if they're pale like that, it's probably the real deal. And sometimes the real deal might have some, some slight mess ups, like look at his eye, see the little the paint chip? But that's not like the chin and this scratch here and the fact that the hair looks like the mold didn't work right. And then actually with capsules, that's another, another giveaway. If you can see their hands or anything that should be detailed, it better be crisp, because if it's not crisp, it's fake. If you see like the, the mold still on there, like they just cracked the mold and popped it out and they don't really care to, to shave, it's fake. It's I don't really see real ones that look that bad. And the other bad part to that is uh, most dealers sell their, and 
They mostly they sell their stuff in boxes. You go over there, they have the they just freshly opened box. All right, pick the box you want, and then when you buy it, you open it. Well, if it was bootleg, you're kind of screwed. And they do box bootlegs. It's really easy, and we'll talk about boxes later yeah, on. They've been getting real big on those. They didn't used to do that. The bootlegs used to come all in plastic. You just have a plastic bag, and that would be your here you go your prize. And we do. I mean, we would hand this stuff out in plastic too because we take all of our stuff out of boxes. But if it's a bootleg thing, it's going to come. Let's go see if we have a good one. Nope, oh, the upskirts. That's a different one. We'll show you that in a second. The bootlegs come packaged all in one. Like uh, this right here on, on the right, that's just his legs. The ones that are all black with the legs sticking out, those are his legs. And his legs come, you can pop his legs out because those come in pieces. You have to put together. The bootleg ones are usually just one piece, maybe two pieces, because they don't want you to have to put it together because all the pieces are crap. So they've already stuck together and it's just one contiguous piece of junk. And this one we put a picture of because the bootleg on the left, they didn't actually even finish painting it. They don't, they don't bother because you wouldn't have looked at it on the underside. That's not what you see when you're looking at the product on the stand. You just see the regular face. The other guys, the whole thing's black, you see? Like, it's made from black material. The other one was you know, flesh tone, they painted it. That's another real big giveaway about Blue Lake capsules. Look at oh, that. That's a little taco man. Hit next. This is another day giveaway of the bases. Uh, two things with the bases. One, obviously, is the copyright. You can see the actual one on the left is made by Bandai themselves. Yes, made in China, of course, but it's cheaper to make stuff there. But on the other one just says, made in 2008. Number I mean, one. Number one, yeah, sorry about that. Um, who is number one? Who's, I mean, anyone can put that good, that's good stuff on there. And that's one of the main things. Look for the copyright. Uh, if you're really, really serious about make sure that you don't get a boot, uh, bootleg, look before you go to the con, go online, see who makes the product that you want. If you want a Naruto figure, if you want an Inuyasha figure, if you want a Mario figure, go to the actual figure you want, look it up who makes it, and when you see it at the actual con, pick it up and make sure it's made by that actual person. Uh, the other thing with bases is look at the actual figure and see that his foot, the footing is actually made for that base. Because you'll see, and for, the, for instance, the Ichigo's, uh, the fake Ichigo's foot, you had to literally stretch the figure to put on the pegs. The real ones just fit perfectly on there because they were made to fit there. So, so the one leg would be straight and the other leg would be slightly canted to one side. And then if you look at, at the one on the right, see the, the real wide one, it has one peg with a hole, one peg that, that still has like a dimple in it. It's because they used a generic mold. They didn't, the, the pieces are not actually for him. So one of those things has a little stick comes out of it and holds each go in one place. The other one is just a filled in hole because they use the generic. They don't need the second one. And it's real obvious. If we flipped it over, you could see the dimple still looks in there, and it kind of looks like crud. And this other one, the, the one that's a normal shape, it has footing for him to actually stand in to keep him balanced. Oh, and that's that's us. Yay, us. Next. All right, plush. It's less common now. It used to be real big, real big time. We sold some fake plush for a while, but that's because we didn't know stuff either. And then they told us we got in trouble, and we didn't sell anymore. And we only buy now from the correct distributors. Now we know it. Dun, dun, dun. But we got all of our info from the guy that sells most of the plush in most dealer's rooms. What's the name of their business? Uh, Half Full Studios. Half Cool what? what? Half Full Studios. Half Full Studios. Half Full. All right. It, James and Chris usually run the thing. And Chris is the one that gave us all of the info. That's Chris. Yay, Chris. That's his butt. Go ahead and read it. All right. Here, I'm going to read this one. Chris tells me some pointers on bootlegs. First, if it looks fake, it's fake. That the, the, boot, the, boot, the plush bootlegs are real obvious because they really don't care and they don't have the time to care. They'll just make a figure, put the clothes in the general color, and then let it go. Good luck. The second, the American ones all have a tag that say Great Eastern or GE on them, and they'll be copyrighted all the issues on there again. The, most of them have little holographics, although now some of the bootleggers are copying the holographics. Well, they can't copy the quality, but they still look like crap. Now the trifolds. That used to be a real big giveaway. All of them that were Japanese, you had to have a three-folder or else it was fake. They're not doing that anymore. Now they're, they're messing with this. Three-fold tag, like a little, little, little piece of cardboard paper that used to come. Now there's some bifolds. So that, that giveaway went gone by the wayside. But still, if it looks like crud, don't get it. And the tax sticker. Now, bifold, trifold, single fold, whatever. It needs a tax sticker on there. And that tax sticker usually has to match what's on the actual doll. You know, dolls come with a little sewn on piece of material, a little strip that says, made in China 2004. The sticker on there has to say the same thing. The sticker essentially matches that, and the fake ones don't care about the stickers. They might make the tag itself 
printed with a fake sticker, but this, if you can't peel it off, it's not real. Another way you can find out that a plush is actually fake is Japanese like a lot of soft plushies. A lot of the fake ones are really hard. Uh, the cotton they put in there is almost like a rock, and they're, they're not squishy, they're not cuddly. They look almost exactly the same, but just feel them too. You can actually feel the difference between a real one and a fake one. The good thing about the plushies is usually they'll let you touch those. So you can pick it up and feel whether or not you like it. Although a good rule of thumb is if it really looks like crap, don't get it just because it's the only figure that's available. Patience, patience. All right, figures. We know the least about these, <laughs> but we have pictures that will like, illustrate. Uh, we, don't, we have never bought really a bootleg figure figure. All the figure figures we bought have been good because we're real picky about what the big figures are like. We're scared of bootlegs, but here's some good way to look at it. Miku and Miku. Okay, they look both. Look at them. See, they both look real good, right? From afar. From afar. But you pretty much have to have them in your hand to yeah. see the quality. This, this is why we say you should ask the questions when you see them. Yeah, ask her, even if they won't let you touch them, ask for a closer look. Can I see that figure? Can you hold it closer to me? I just want to look. At it. And one, check the painting. Uh, a lot of the bootleg paintings uh, have a lot of smearing. Uh, figures. The great thing about them is they're they're pretty much flawless. They're pretty much perfect when you get them out of the package. And that's why people spend the 30 to $120 for a figure of an anime figure that they like. So check the paint. The paint's smeared. If all of a sudden she has white hair and then the white goes over to her cheek, or if she has like blue shoes and all of a sudden the blue is on her foot, that's a dead giveaway. Also, every single piece belonging to that figure fits perfectly into the base of it. Uh, if you go downstairs in the dealer's room and you pick up one of the uh, Fate Stay Night figures, and you pull out the hair. It has a little peg that fits perfectly into the head. Bootlegs don't have the time to do that, so what they do is they keep the peg for the hair, but they'll make little plastic circles pop out of the head, and so you just hook it into the plastic circle. You can't see it from afar, but if you take it apart, they have extra pieces all over it. Or if they don't do have the pieces that come apart, they're just stuck in their head, and you can't take them apart. The good thing about figures, the majority for uh, uh, Figmas, um, Nendroids, you can take them, they're posable and you can take them apart. Now, the big statues, like the Samus Orin, those obviously, the $250 yeah, figures. Yeah, the resins. Yeah, you're not gonna take those apart because they're beautiful the way they're, they're made to be that way. And usually they have electronics in them too, uh, the Samus ones, and all the big time Nintendo ones kind of glow now. Um, Thanks Nintendo for taking away our giveaways. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, just check that. All right, boxes, like we were saying, they're not always reliable, but some of them are if you touch them. The, their normal boxes usually feel pretty stacked. They use pretty good cardboard because they love their packaging. And the plastic on the inside is going to keep that shape. The fake ones are real, real watery. And you can ask about it. If you, do you have to touch the box and say, hey, what's, what's the deal with this? And maybe they'll tell you, we, go, we kept them in bad conditions. They've been around the ring. It's real it's human or something. But you ask because the fake, the fake figures really look like crud when you get them. When you get them and you touch them and you add them out. All right, see like this. They look almost exactly alike because they're the bootleggers copied the box. From this one, I can tell, but only because I look at these figures all the time and I can I can see which one looks weird. Let's keep going. Same, huh? Pretty good bootleggers. All right. The only difference is that little bitty red thing. The licensing, the licensing, licensing sticker. sticker. That's it. But once you get it out of its box, you can the, see you can see how bad that one is. It's the paint is crap. And the other one is beautiful and flawless and gorgeous. It's where you can love him. I mean, they didn't really have to focus on the eyes. His eyes don't really match anyway. But the head, that's nasty. And his lips, and you see, All it's gross. Accessories. And the bad thing about it is that you, even if you pick up the box and you're looking through it, you have to look through about first the first piece of plastic. And then it's wrapped. It already has a case of plastic around the figure. And then they wrap plastic around the actual figure. So you're seeing a bunch of plastic. You don't see the real details. And you unwrap it and you have it at home. And then it's just too late. And then you can try to contact the dealer. Hey, you sold me a bootleg. How many dealers that come from you know around the United States are going to answer an email? And then again, how many people actually put their cards when they sell you a figure, especially if they know it's bootleg? Sometimes my best to open the stuff you get if, when you go upstairs. If you're going to be at a con for three days, open it. If you buy it day one, go home, go back upstairs, open it, look at it. If it's correct, go back the next day. Oh, man, is this bootleg? Or ask the con. Unless you're a collector and you don't oh, want yeah. to open it. Ah, good point. The collectors beware. Sorry, y'all. I can't help the collectors if they can't see it on the outside. But ask the dealers. If the dealers won't help you, ask the con. Because the con has to help you. Because the con does not want to have dealers with bootlegs. They give us this paperwork, like lists and lists of you do not have bootlegs. 
find you and I and kill you. It's terrible stuff. Yes, but tell them. If you're worried that you just bought something good like Aston Dealer, they give you any guff. Go back up and tell the, the dealer's liaisons or people that looks like con staff. Hey, con staff, did I buy a bootleg? I think I might have bought a bootleg. Can you show me the dealer's liaison? And they'll help. They'll walk around. Most dealers will know what they're selling. And they'll, they'll be able to help you. And we've been on the other side of the table. We were con goers for six years yeah, before, before we, we were actually dealers. So we understand how it is. You get into the con, but you're not thinking, am I going to buy bootleg? You're thinking, shoot, I'm going to a con. Let's go have fun. Let's go over there to the dealer's room. Oh, I saw the figure I want. I'm going to buy it. Should I buy it now? Should I wait till Sunday to see if they give me a discount? You get excited. I mean, then the, everyone's excited with you, especially if you go with friends. It's even 10 times worse. So they're trying to drag you. I want to look at here. I want to look at there. So it's easy to get mixed up in the flow of things. And, it's, and you see a bunch of other people talk about, well, make sure you look at this, make sure you look at this, but you're not gonna think about that when you're in the heat of the moment. But if you take, these are what we gave are really simple, quick things that you can just think about on the fly. Uh, the main thing is just ask to see it. Um, don't just say, hey, that one up there, the one with the $25 uh, sticker on it, I want that one, here's $25. They put it in a bag, they twist the bag, and they give it to you, you're not even looking at it. Just get time, take time, even if they're busy behind the counter, can I see that box? And if they're nice, they'll actually take a look at it. If they say no, it's up there for a reason unless you're gonna buy it. I mean, cool. do you wanna really buy from someone that's a jerk? And If they want your money, they're gonna show you what they've got. And if you're wary of it, just walk away with your money. Give your money to somebody who will care and, and point at it. And if you're real worried that they're cheating other people, tell the con. The con will come up, the con will tell us. Usually the con of people roving, but if some dealers know that the con people are coming, they might hide stuff just stuff. in the middle of the table until they're, they're gone. We've met a lot. We've, We've seen, seen a lot. And it seen happens a lot. with the pins, because we all got told the no-nos on the pins, and they'll still throw those nasty pins out. So. Do you have any questions? Have we been clear? Yes, Crystal. <laughs> Beautiful. Do you have questions? Yay. No. Well, good. I'm closing it out. Thank you guys for coming to our little panel. Thank you for being <laughs> our, our two people. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Girls, any questions? My love, anything? Our wives. <laughs> Am I still cute? <laughs>